Hey guys, and welcome to the channel. And this is not SC Fish Keeping, but a shout out to him. I'm Joe, and this is Densmore Outdoors, and this is your fish tank update. So, a lot of things have been happening since we've uh, got the 125 up and going, and we got Steve the Swanee Bass in there. And the biggest thing you can notice is the lack of grass. What happened, right? So, that's what we're going to go over today. We're going to go over what happened to all my grass, why is there a uh, Man, don't you hate it when you just blank out? Okay, so we're gonna go over what happened to all my grass, what killed it, and how hopefully we're gonna to try to fix that problem. And also, there's some other stuff going on, like uh, things that we fed Steve, and some new tank mates possibly, and some of the tank mates that are in there moving out, sadly. So uh, let's get into that. All right, so. First things first, guys, thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in and checking out the new tank update video. This more outdoors, home of the only pet swanee bass on YouTube, whose name is Steve. And we also have Big Red and Holly the Bluegill, if you don't know. But the elephant in the room, what happened to all my eelgrass? Well, as you guys know, when I set this aquarium up, I made this a dirted tank, and I wanted it to be kind of natural as I could get it. And uh, what I did was I planted what they call jungle valve or eelgrass, which is basically the same thing. Uh, it grows locally here, and I planted it, and if you looked at uh, my videos in the past, this almost the whole back of the aquarium all the way to the top, which is covered in jungle valve uh, slash eelgrass, and the fish loved it. Anytime they felt nervous or uh, they just felt like they wanted to hunt for food, they would just go in that jungle valve and hide out. Well, Probably about two weeks ago, I noticed Steve rubbing against the rocks and it was like he was having some kind of spasms where he would uh, clench open and close his jaw really fast and shake his head. And from what I gathered, that means they had some kind of parasite. And it even looked like Big Red had some kind of fungus uh, growing on it. It wasn't ick. Uh, I know what it looks like from having tropical fish and other fish. So, after hunting around YouTube and doing some research, I came up with this. Seacom, Seacom Paragard. So you're probably wondering, how did I come up with using this? Well, I needed to treat the whole aquarium. 125 because all fish in it had something going on with them and I don't have a quarantine tank big enough to accommodate Steve or probably even Big Red. So that's the reason with this, this could treat 125 gallons no problem, each cat full treats 10 gallons and there are 16.9 fluid ounces in here. So you could treat it no problem. I did a bunch of research, see what like the reviews on Amazon and so on and everybody had good things to say about it. It said it cleared up all their fish's uh, parasite problems and fungal issues and so on. So, and even looked up where people have asked if it was safe for crustaceans, if it was safe for snails, and if it was safe for plants. Plants being the biggest thing for me. And people said, yeah, they had no problems with it, uh, with plants. So cool, got this. This is gonna be my miracle cure. Treated it. Uh, four days in a row and probably on the second or third day I noticed my uh, eelgrass was starting to become a little mushy is what they call uh, in aquarium world they call it melting and it just was not getting any better and it got to the point where it melted all the way down to the roots and I just had a gigantic mess in here. It was wrapped all around the wave maker, the underwater fan, it was wrapped all around the intake so the water was nasty as could be and I had to go in there and manually get all that dead eelgrass out. So, this is my culprit. That was the only thing that's changed or been different in the aquarium is adding this. Even though 
People said it was safe for plants. If you have jungle valve slash eelgrass, whatever you want to call it, this will kill your eelgrass. I know from experience. Now, pretty much happening to start, I had a big wall of eelgrass, now I have nothing. I have to start all over. Thankfully, I don't think it killed the roots. It just killed the leaves of the eelgrass. So, what are we going to do to fix that? Well, I have a bag of fertilizer tablets here. You go on Amazon, I think it's called like, uh, I forgot what, what it's called. It's basically it's house plant fertilizer and they put it in these little capsules. Now, if I find it, I'll leave it down in the description below. So, we're going to add this fertilizer to the yield grass to hopefully give it a jump start and get it to take back off again. I really don't want to pay and buy more eel grass. Uh, out in the St. John's River, normally I could get it for free, but there is none in the St. John's River. It still has yet to come back from uh, after the hurricanes and the ice storm that we had, manatees chowing down on it. And of course, the FWC is doing nothing to help uh, redo it. They're too busy killing all the grass right now instead of replacing all the stuff that's gone in the St. John's River. But that's neither here nor there, that's a different subject. You don't want to go off on that tangent. If you do, let me know if you want to see that video, and I will gladly go on that tangent. So here's the plan for the day. We are going to do a water change on this tank. When the water changes down, oh, that brings me up to my other subject. Holly, who's right here by the rock, I don't know if the camera's got her or not. She has been getting picked on a lot She by uh, Big Red, the red breast. So sadly, we're going to take her out of the tank. I don't want to see her get picked on, I don't want to see her die from stress. So we're going to put her out in the pond where she can have a good life. And get food every day and be around other bluegills and get to live, be a typical bluegill. But that gives us an opportunity too. So that means we're only going to have two fish in the aquarium. That's going to be awfully NBA 125. So I'm going to add a new fish. And I'm going to let you guys vote on it. If you go to the Densmore Outdoor YouTube page, like the actual home page for Densmore Outdoors on YouTube, you'll see a community tab. I am going to leave a poll there of four different fish, and I want you guys to vote on it. What fish you want to see put in the aquarium. Uh, the choices are going to be a red eared sunfish, or a shell cracker, as we call them around here, a warm mouth, warm mouth sunfish, a catfish of some sort, either channel cat, bullhead, some kind of catfish, or a pickerel, or as we call them, a jack, which is like a pike type species. And down here we have redfin pickerel, grass pickerel, and chain pickerel. Chain pickerel can get pretty big for this aquarium. They're like a southern pike. I think the Florida record is like six pounds. So they can get pretty big, so I might be looking for like a redfin pickerel, but Last option on some kind of pickerel species. So when you get done watching this video, head on over there and vote on what fish you want to see put in this aquarium. So Holly's going to be moving. We're adding these. We're doing a water change. We're going to draw the water down. And it's finally getting cold enough in here that I added a uh, heater. I'm sure you saw that earlier from the close-up clips to the aquarium. So now it keeps the water temp at the coldest, like 67, when it gets down to the 30s at night here. It was getting pretty cold in this aquarium without a heater. It's getting down to like 49 and the fish did not like that. They would just sit on the bottom and not do anything. And it's not also uh, not good for the uh, grass either that I had growing. It'll just stun its growth. It won't grow at all. I know you're thinking that's not what killed it because it lives in the wild here and it gets way colder than that. It was this stupid junk. The good news is all the fish are healed up. So I think I'd rather have healthy fish than no grass. And I finally managed to go catch a big crawfish and we're going to go put him in the tank. And Steve's pretty full. You can see there's uh, shiners swimming all around in the aquarium. He's already about six of them. We're going to dump that big crawfish in there, change the water, and uh, I'm going to try to get video of Steve's reaction on a big crawfish. Because crawfish are the favorite food of Swanee bass. Uh, I was fortunate enough to put some in here earlier from a friend of mine who was nice enough to bring me some by and he destroyed them. Even the uh, red breast ate a whole bunch of them. But 
you guys are enough. And I'm sure you fast forwarded me rambling on about all what's going on. Let's just do the video. I had a trap sitting all night long and all with dog food in it. And all I could get was that guy. That's a big old crawfish though. What do you think, Steve? You want a crawfish or are you still mad that I'm in here with all the lights on? He's looking at it. Even if he doesn't gobble it up, it'd still be nice to have the crawfish in here to uh, just kind of clean things up. There you go. Holy crap, you hold. What, man? Holly, you don't want a piece of that thing. It will mess you up. I did really not expect that crawfish to move that fast. Everybody was after it except for Steve. I don't think he's mad. I think he's kind of mad that we're in here. And he's over here by the airstone. Like I said, he'll go around and uh, he'll clean stuff up. And I got a feeling that Steve, when he gets hungry again, will eventually find him. At least when he's done eating all these shiners. All right, I got work to do. You guys ever wondered how I change this much water on this big of a tank? I have a piece of PVC, it's shaped, it's like an elbow with a T on it. And what the T does is when the water comes back in, I turn on the hose, it keeps it from blowing straight down and blowing out all the gravel. So it sends it out different directions and I have it stopped to be able to turn it off and turn it on. And all I do, and just hang it over the side here. I've gotten pretty used to it. I don't get as scared as I used to. And then I'll still get the siphon going and when it gets to that certain point, which is about 50%, it'll stop on its own. Alright, so got our aquarium green halfway down. And time to go to work. Start adding these fertilizer tabs. I don't know if the camera's going to zoom in on that. Very well or not, but it's called Osmocot. I looked up the name, it's called Osmocot. So we're just going to stick these down in the substrate and uh, hopefully they'll help these plants bounce back, give them the nutrients that apparently they're lacking. I don't know what that uh, Paragard does to like, melt the leaves like that, but hopefully we this will put it back where it'll start growing again. Now time for the hardest part of the job probably. I'm trying to get Holly out here so I can put her in the pond. And of course Steve's in the way. Got her. Okay. I don't know if you can't get picked on anymore. She is. Alright, let's go. Alright, so I decided to let Holly out over here by the feeder. This thing usually goes off every day at 5 o'clock. And it's about 3 right now. It's very windy out today. Plus there's uh, all kinds of vegetation and stuff she can hide in until she gets comfortable. But mostly there's going to be other bluegill around. And if she's hungry, there'll be some food here in a minute. And hopefully she'll learn when to come over to this feeder. So. There she is. All right, Holly. Say goodbye to everybody. She's kind of sitting on the bottom. She's not really sure what to do just yet. Come on, girl. I know you're in a big aquarium now, right? Here she goes. Off 
she goes. I don't think there's any bass in here big enough yet to eat her, so I think she'll be okay. All right, so Holly's off for a new home. Now we gotta fill the tank back up. And if you guys are wondering, I'm not using city water to refill this. Uh, if I was, I'd have to you know, decontaminate it and dechlorinate it. I just got good old fashioned well water. So it's nice, cool, clean water coming from underground aquifers here in Florida. And uh, I don't know if you guys see that in the background, but that was my Christmas present. Full of water and adult beverages. Complete opposite, right? Well, that's it, all done. Water's filled back up. It's gonna be a little murky, a little cloudy because you know I was just planting all that stuff in the substrate and I got dirt substrate, so it stirred a lot of that stuff up, which is good because it gets in the filter system and makes the tank that much even cleaner. I mean, you think about adding uh, another canister filter to this to make the water even that much better, but we'll see how it goes. Right now, it's doing a good job. It's keeping up with the fish. So remember, guys, go to the homepage for Just More Outdoors on YouTube. Go to the community tab and vote on what fish you want to see put in this tank next. Oh, and learn from my mistake. If you have live plants or in your aquarium, do not add this stuff in there. Get some kind of quarantine set up and put them in a tank by yourself where there's just rocks and nothing else. Or just a plastic tote, that'll work too. I, I, looking back, that's probably what I should have done was got like a big plastic tote like you get from Home Depot. But I wanted to go the lazy route and now I'm having to work more for that. Speaking of more, thank you for watching Diz More Outdoors. I'm Joe, if you haven't already, click subscribe and click the little notification bell too. That way you're staying up to date with any new videos that I put up. And if you want to see uh, in depth uh, about video about the tank setup, like what kind of filter I use, the light, and all the equipment that goes with this aquarium, let me know down in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to make that for you if you're kind of curious of uh, how I got this thing set up and running. As always, I'm Joe with Dinsmore Outdoors, and we do more in Dinsmore. Sometimes because we have to. We'll see you next time. Take care. Dinsmore Outdoors is proudly sponsored by Bruiser Baits. Fish the best. Vexen Rods, strike first with Vexen. And Real Gear, make fishing your style.